So we got a treat for you this episode, folks. We partnered up with none other than Z Grills, Wi-Fi Pellet Grills, to bring you a beautiful new piece of equipment, the Greenhorn Barbecue, and we're so excited to show you. Stick around. So we couldn't be more excited to have Z Grills reach out to us and inquire whether we wanted to partner up with them and do a review on one of their grills. So they sent us this beautiful 702C2E model, approximately 700 square inches of cooking surface uh, with Wi-Fi and guys, it's, it's beautiful. I think you will agree that the uh, fit and finish on this is second to none. So what's so special about this grill you might ask? Well. First off, what caught my attention right away was the stainless steel lid. It is a thicker than most lids and it's heavy and you really feel that right away. So guys, this smoker is packed full of value. They include gloves, a bucket, two, two meat probes, and a beautiful cover with grommets for a drawstring. And it's a beautiful cover, by the way. It's fitted, it even fits the smokestack. Now, if you go to their website, you'll see that's an $80 cover and they're including that in a discounted price for this grill. All you gotta do is follow our link down in the description, go check for yourself. So in a minute, we're gonna go ahead and do an initial burn-in per the factory recommended instructions on this. But really quick, I wanted to touch on three things that we really liked about this grill. Now, number one for me is most people may not notice this, but the fire shroud, the diffuser plate, if you will, is trussed and reinforced. Now, the one that's on my Traeger Little Tex has warped and rusted out from years of service. This one is substantial. It's a thicker uh, grade of steel and it's trussed and it's gonna keep its shape longer, I believe, and I really like that. I, I look at that as kind of an attention to detail that many other manufacturers don't do. Number two is the use of stainless steel, guys. Everything from the lid to the door itself, stainless steel, the chrome accents, and this little nameplate right here kind of reminds me of car club plaques that you see on hot rods mounted on the rear bumpers. It looks like it's cast aluminum to me, but it's uh, powder coated, it's knurled, and it's machine finished, and it's really, really classy. It really, again, speaks to the attention to detail and craftsmanship. And number three, actually there's probably gonna be three or four more things, but number three is the sight glass in the hopper, which is a 24 pound hopper, I believe. Almost uh, a small bag can fit in here, but you can basically see when it's starting to get low. Number four, I'm gonna go ahead and add another one, is Wi-Fi. If you haven't stepped up to Wi-Fi capability on your pellet smoker, you need to do that. Uh, I'm gonna show you in a future cook the functionality of the Wi-Fi, but let me tell you, it's intuitive, it's powerful, and you can even shut this down from uh, anywhere uh, as long as you got internet service. And one little note on assembly. Yes, you can get a great deal if you order directly from Z Grills. You might even find yourself a discount but you're gonna ensure that you're gonna get a brand new unopened box, free shipping, and the installation and assembly couldn't be easier. Guys, I took my time and read the instructions thoroughly before I started, and I used all their tools, and it only took me two hours. Any backyard shade tree mechanic could do this, and even a beginner, I encourage you to give it a shot. Okay, now for the initial burn-in, guys. So the first thing you're gonna do is remove all the grates, the grease pan, the heat baffle from the grill, Open the hopper lid, check for any foreign objects inside the auger and hopper. And you're gonna notice there, folks, that there's even a little bit of assembly lube. Mine had quite a bit of oil and uh, preservative oil and lubricating oil, I assume is what it is. So um, I wanted to make sure that I was gonna run this at a high temperature long enough to burn that out. So connect the power cord and make sure it's a grounded 110 volt outlet. And you're gonna initiate startup by pressing the power button on the default grill temperature is 275 degrees. The display should show actual and preset temperatures. If a code appears, refer to your troubleshooting guide. 
Then you're gonna verify that the auger is actually turning after about two or three minutes, and this is on low setting. Then you're gonna feel for air blowing from the blower fan above the fire pot. And the hot rod, yep, you got that right. Not only looks like a hot rod, it has one. The hot rod should start to heat up within three minutes. And that's what I call the first phase of this burn-in process. Post-inspection is fill the hopper with pellets and close the hopper lid. Now I chose to use some other pellets that I had sitting around. Z-Grills did send me two bags of their pellets that I'm gonna do a first cook on and give you guys a full review on that. But I wanted to use some other pellets because I know these were pellets that is gonna be sloshing around some of that assembly oil and I just wanted to burn those off and, and get them out of the way. So after you fill the hopper with pellets and close the lid, you wanna switch the temperature to high. Now you could do this via the app if you have already downloaded the app and installed it on your phone or you could just do it by twisting that control knob and this controls temperature in five degree increments. Now you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to the fire pot and the hopper because in a few minutes, you're gonna hear and see pellets falling into that fire pot. Then some white smoke should appear and that's your indication that the hot rod is working properly and then you wanna shut it down. Again, turn it off either by the app, which is very handy to do, or on the controller itself by just pressing and holding until you see OFF. So at the end of this first phase of the burn-in, you wanna let the grill completely cool down. So don't install any grates in there yet or anything like that, keep the lid open. You know, it's gonna take about 10 minutes for that shutdown process to occur. And I waited another 15 minutes after that. So once it's completely cool, add more pellets if you need to, then reassemble all the trays, grates, close the lid, and turn it on, it should immediately go to 275 as the default temperature setting. And once smoke appears, turn it all the way to the high and let it run for about 45 minutes. Now this is gonna burn off any of those oils and other kinds of residue, hopefully, and uh, just let it run for 45 minutes. And then via the app, you can hit the off or from the uh, control panel itself. I like to open the lid and it's gonna run for about 10 minutes during the shutdown period. Now these shutdown periods are very vital to the health of your smoker. Many, many stories are roaming the internet about people having auger fires and just all these horrible experiences and even smoke fires. It's usually because of an improper shutdown process or not taking care of your pellet smoker, which we'll cover in future videos. Now, one little note on just general cleanliness and safety. Inside the smoker, there appeared to be a little bit of white residue. I believe that was just the smoke residue from the uh, oils and lubricants and things inside it. So just take yourself a damp cloth, maybe a little bit of detergent on there, not wringing wet, just damp, and wipe all that away and dry it. You don't wanna hose it down, right, guys? There's electricity here. Make sure it's unplugged before you do this. But I went in and I wiped this all down and stuff like that. It's just a good measure so that your food really tastes like food. Now, speaking of cleaning your pellet grill, uh, if you haven't already, uh, why don't you go watch my tutorial on how to clean a pellet grill in no time flat. We'll leave a link right here. We'll see you later.